A BBC investigation has found evidence that China's policy of transferring hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities from northwest Xinjiang to factory jobs often far from home is being used as a method of uprooting and assimilating the population. It's also uncovered possible connections between these workers and some major international brands. Uh, China says that transferring workers away from the region is a way of tackling rural poverty and unemployment. Our China correspondent, John Sudworth, has this report. At this factory, the Uyghur workers are clearly visible. More than 2,000 miles from home, brought all the way to central China by a massive relocation scheme. Now the BBC has found compelling evidence of how it works. In this Xinjiang village, the authorities need a hundred people to send to jobs on the other side of the country. They set up a stall, but this 2017 state media report shows no one's interested. So they go house to house. If you stay here, this official says, you'll be married soon and never be able to leave. Will you go, he asks. No, she says. But with a mixture of propaganda and heavy persuasion, the young woman eventually agrees. I'll go if others go, she says. The BBC has new evidence that this separation from family and culture is, in part at least, precisely the point. A Chinese study produced for senior officials says labor transfers help assimilate Uyghur minorities, transform their thinking and reduce Uyghur population density. The study also outlines how they are transported in groups, accompanied by security guards and put through political indoctrination. This is just an unprecedented authoritative source written by really leading academics and former government officials with unprecedented high level access in Xinjiang itself. That drive. So we've spoken to one worker here who has confirmed that as many as a few hundred Uyghurs are employed in this factory. But unlike the Chinese staff, they are unable to leave the factory premises. Some Uyghurs, it concludes, are unwilling to leave their homes, a problem that should be tackled with strong guidance and persistent measures. John Sudworth, BBC News, Beijing. More than 4 billion people live across this vast continent called Asia, and we are telling their stories. Villages in China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region are some of the poorest and most isolated in the country. Many villagers there, women in particular, have never seen life outside their communities. Now, a government project in 2017 sought to put village women to work in another province. The goal was to empower them and help lift their families out of poverty. But in Pishan County, the move initially faced resistance from families who were not willing to let their daughters go. Yet after two days, no one from Konabaza village in Pishan County showed up. Residents in this village in southern Xinjiang have farmed for generations. Some 40% of the population, mostly female, are poor, earning less than 3,000 yuan or $450 a year. Then an opportunity came. A textile factory in Anhui province wanted workers from the area. The Anhui Aid Xinjiang Committee had hired nearly 100 residents from other villages, but failed in Konabaza. A change in the group's recruitment style was in order. Before visiting families, they first shortlisted qualified villagers. 19-year-old Usnap is a high school graduate. She has stayed home most of her life and her parents have started finding her a suitor. To her father, Usnap working in Anhui was out of the question. Most girls in the village devote their lives to their families after finishing junior, senior, or vocational high school. Busnap has three sisters. 
Her 28-year-old elder sister is a mother of three kids. As her father speaks with the work group, Busnap keeps her head down. In the home of Gulikis, another girl in the village, the offer was flatly rejected. Following tradition, Gulikis could not speak for herself in front of her parents. Girls like her are supposed to keep their heads down, even if their future is the subject of discussion. But the group wasn't about to give up just yet. To encourage the villagers, they enlisted the help of Huriet Ugabla from Yitian County, some 300 kilometers from Pishan. She was among the first batch of girls from Xinjiang to be sent to Zhejiang province, where she worked in a textile factory. She's now a veteran worker and manager. Villagers listen intently as she told them about her experiences. After answering questions, she went to talk to other girls in the village, and she proved convincing. A newly married girl was willing to go. Her husband's a cook, so the recruiter said they'd help them find a job too. <laughs> Officials were able to convince the company to take in the couple. And after much convincing, seven villagers from Konapaza and Maza East villages agreed to go, including Musna. It was the first time in many years for the village to send their people to another province. On the eve of the girls' departure, villagers held a farewell party for them. After completing their training at Pishan Vocational High School, nearly 100 girls were ready to go. Most of them were leaving home for the first time. Their families came to say goodbye carrying their hopes and dreams. When we come back, we'll check on the villagers as they take on their jobs in a garment factory. It's a journey these girls never thought they'd make, where a new chapter in their lives was to begin. Setting foot in this garment factory was like seeing an entirely new world for the girls from Pishan. A new experience for the girls buying groceries. A BBC investigation has found evidence that China's policy of transferring hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities from northwest Xinjiang to factory jobs often far from home is being used as a method of uprooting and assimilating the population.